Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Great to have you with us on the program. Back with us is Mary Brooks. She's an Australian writer, mother of two adults, a general practitioner. She's written a number of thought-provoking short stories. That's what we'll be talking about in the program today. She was with us before, and you can find that program in the archives at thisweekinamerica.us. The video version, YouTube, and iTunes version. Uh, the book we discussed at the time, Mary Lives, a story of anorexia nervosa and bipolar disorder. Mary Brooks, our guest back with us on the program. Mary, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. It is Very great. Good. Yeah, I'm in one side of the world and you're on the other. Mary is calling us from uh, Australia to be on the program today. We're talking about some of the many short stories that she's written and let's just talk a little bit about the background, and then we'll get into some of the short stories in particular. Uh, tell me about the fascination with short stories. Was this something you grew up uh, reading as a child? Um, I did, but I didn't ever see myself as writing them until I'd written the Mary Lives book, and I decided that I would try and write some short stories and found it quite a good medium to express myself and enjoyed writing them, so I've kept on. Yes, and a number of uh, of short stories, and all the information you'll find at exlibris.com. Just put in Mary Brooks, and you'll get information on the uh, the book Mary Lives, which we've talked about, and the short stories that we'll be discussing on the program today. Or you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly to exlibris.com. Where do you get the thoughts? What's the inspiration for the for the different stories that you've written? Um, Some of them are based on true life. Um, Others, I I go to a writing class and every now and again they'll um, get us to do some work on a special topic and I find that particular topic interesting and will expand it into a short story. Um, I I guess the ideas come to me sometimes from uh, my travels, I might like a place that I'm going to or I might see something um, and I base the story on that. Yeah, and there are a number of themes that you that you write about. So it's not just a particular theme that you continue to write to short stories on using the same theme. You really do a wide variety no. of themes, don't you? Yes, I do, yes. Let's talk about some in particular, and uh, then we'll give you the information. And again, it's at exlibris.com is the website. Mary Brooks is the author. You can get there by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. First, what we're going to talk about is is a short story called Cricket, which is a, uh, a favorite game for some people in, in some parts of, of, the, of, of the world. Talk about this story. Set it up for us, please. Um, cricket's a story about a young lad... Um, playing a game of cricket, and he's he's quite morose. He's um, locked up in himself, and he can't figure out why. And this particular day, he doesn't enjoy his game. He um, he's got something on his mind, and he doesn't realise what the something on his mind is until right at the end. Um, and he and he remembers then that it's related to a promotion at work and his nervousness about it but throughout the he is he's distracted and that's what the story's about yeah and this is something he really enjoys playing and he's not quite sure why he's distracted he's with a group of friends and they're all laughing and having a good time and he just isn't isn't quite with it until like you mentioned at, at the end of the story when he realizes what the uh what the problem is, the story is called Cricket. It's a, it's a really entertaining read. Uh, it's very vividly written. I, I, I don't fully understand cricket. Being from the United States, it, it's not a major sport here. But I can sort of understand it as you're describing how that's how that's going. What was the inspiration for this? Was it the sport that, that inspired you? Or was it the fact that there was this this distraction that took him a while to figure out exactly what it was? It was a distraction, and um, I'd been to a similar experience myself and found myself watching the clock all the time, which he's doing. Um, Throughout the story, the day goes fairly slowly because he's watching the clock and he finds, you know, sort of the half hour or the hour goes fairly slowly. And I had that happen to myself on one occasion when I was thinking about something else at the back of my mind, and I thought... 
I'd combine the two in a sort of a game uh, which should have been enjoyable to him, plus this background unease. Yeah, the the uh, the short story is called Cricket. Our guest on the program is Mary Brooks. Uh, you can find Mary's work available at exlibris.com, and you can log on directly to uh, to her website by going to thisweekinamerica.us. Also, the book we talked about uh, on a past program with uh, with Mary called Mary Lives: A Story of Anorexia Nervosa and Bipolar Disorder. A, a fascinating uh, book and program that's available if you go to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Another short story that that Mary has written is called The Wedding. And set us up and tell us exactly what you're writing about in that. Um, it's about two young Vietnamese Australians and how they fell in love and then how they actually arranged their wedding, the um, the business of agreeing and disagreeing about different aspects of the wedding. The, the actual um, reception caused some difficulties with them and finally they came to a decision that... It's it's more or less a, a compressed story, a love story. Yes, and in it you've got. Uh, in fact, they're talking about where they're going to have the uh, the wedding reception, and he, and he picks a place, and she doesn't. She's not real excited about it because sharks. Does that go back to a fear of sharks that, that you have, or where did that uh, come from? <laughs> uh, this is an actual place. It's it's a beautiful place where. Um, there are great big uh, glass-walled um, areas where you can see all the fish swimming about. And in one area, there's a, there's a big glass-walled tunnel, and it's very popular for wedding photographs. Um, and certainly you can see sharks um, swimming about, and sharks are a very feared um, fish in Australia because every year... Um, there might be a dozen people taken by sharks and either maimed or killed. So I don't think very many Australians like sharks. And certainly don't want them on their wedding day. That's all discussed in the uh, in the short story, <laughs> The Wedding. Yeah, that's obvious, yes. Mary yes. Brooks, our guest on the program. The books are available at exlibris.com, the publishing company. Uh, another work we're going to talk about is called Water Lilies. Exactly what's the premise that's correct. there? correct. Water lilies is a beautiful or are beautiful paintings by Monet, an impressionist. And this story is based on several of his paintings, a sort of conglomeration of, of these close visions, actual visions of water lilies growing in ponds that I'd seen. And they were, they were beautiful, both the the paintings and the reality. And I just was smitten with them and had to write about them. So much, it appears, in reading your short stories based on your observations. When you are just going through everyday life, going through experiences, are you sort of calculating, do I have something there? Is there something that really moves me that that I can write about in a short story? That often happens, and sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't. But, yes, certainly... I might be walking somewhere or see something and it spurs a, an idea in my mind. And as I say, sometimes I remember these things and other times I don't. But I'm, I'm often um, seeing something that I think, wow, that would be a beautiful scene. And, you know, like I say, sometimes I do remember and in, to integrate these into a story. Into a story. And other times I forget them or don't have time to make a note of them. The stories are all relatable. Is that one of the criteria that you use in determining whether or not you're going to go through and write a story? This is something that has has general interest, that people will be able to read the story and be able to to actually see themselves possibly in in a role in that story. Yes, a lot of them are based on human emotions, which are, Yes, as you say, relatable to all people, and others are purely um, a scene or an experience that people can share. Who are some of the influences on on your writing style? Some of the uh, some of the authors, the writers that that you enjoy writing or reading now, and maybe uh, read uh, growing up as a child. 
Oh, one that I read was O. Henry. I loved his stories, and I, I really can't remember too many names, but that was one in particular that I was fascinated by. When someone reads a, a short story, and we talked about three of them, there are a number available, and you'll find the information available at exlibris.com. The Wedding, Water Lilies, Cricket are the three that we've talked about in the program. When it's over, besides the entertainment factor, is, is there any takeaway you want for the reader? Are you, you trying to leave them with, with, a, with a subtle message of some kind? Yes, there's the one in particular I'd like to read a little from. It's called pregnant pain and it's the story of two young women in the 1970s it's a true story with a few alterations of course Um, and this little bit says Jill was 22 and 12 weeks pregnant St Margaret's Hospital was to be her home for the next seven months Jill was being protected from society's eyes or punished for the misdeed whichever way you chose to interpret it In 1970, it was unheard of for her to be an unmarried mother. And as I say, that was a true story, and it really affected me by the poignancy of it. And the two girls in the story were worked hard. They they did a 12-hour day. They and in a sort of a a horrible irony, they were forced to serve breakfast to all these other young had their babies in their room and were enjoying the the experience of being, you know, sort of first-time young mothers. And here were these two pregnant women who would never be young mothers because as soon as baby was born, it was whisked away from them. And they never had any chance to see or relate to that baby. And apart from serving the mother's breakfast, etc., these girls would spend hours and hours in a hot, laundry and which wasn't conducive to young pregnant women it made one of the girls in particular very very sick but I mean that story really affected me and I felt that other people might take away from it um, a sadness and that's why I wrote that story. Our guest on This Week in America is Mary Brooks. The books uh, are available, the short stories we're talking about, as well as her book, Mary Lives, a story of anorexia nervosa and bipolar disorder, available at exlibris.com. You can uh, get there by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Just uh, log on and go, uh, go directly there. So many of the short stories you write, too, empower th- the readers, and I'm sure that's something that you like to do, to make them feel empowered when they when they finish the story yes i i do write like that um one story in particular is a young girl's diary and this is quite a young girl maybe nine years old somewhere around that time and she's being brought up by a single mother whose husband's left her and it just shows the sort of confusion and um, hopefulness that this young girl experiences. And I guess in the long run, people to have a think about a similar situation they might be part of and to feel a little bit of sympathy for people like that. Yeah, in the the story, Dear Diary, it's interesting because a character comes into this girl's life who who seems to know something about her father. He ends up disappearing. There's a friend that has a secret that won't tell her the secret, and uh, it ends with her mother's birthday. And the the the, the guy Joe, the character, uh, has left, and she doesn't really know a whole lot more about about her father. Was that based on a, a personal experience, or where did that story come from? Um, That comes actually from one of my patients. I I do draw stories from the interaction I have with patients at work. They're they're not absolutely the same and they're not identifiable, but um, sometimes I'll be caught by a particular emotion that, that is highlighted in that family or in that particular person, and I try and recreate the emotion of the situation rather than rely on the actual details of the truth. 
but you know, just create a story around a, a true situation and change it. I mentioned the relatability factor with the uh, with the stories that Mary has written. You you talk so often about common everyday happenings, and as I'm reading through the the whole list of short stories. It's something that, again, we can all sort of relate to it and understand the story. Uh, talk about writing from that standpoint. It has to. It gives you a great deal of freedom if you've got a topic you want to talk about. Maybe something that has moved you again in, in dealing with a patient. You can go ahead and uh, and do that and help other people in the process. Yes, I I write a fair bit about um, not or oh, not a fair bit. I do incorporate a lot about people suffering from mental illness in my stories because I find that a particular area that I work a lot with and you'll come across somebody who's depressed or somebody who's anxious, somebody who has particular phobia. Um, the, the, all my stories are not included in these three books. I've written ten books, so these three were my first three. Um, one of the stories in particular is called Another Bad Night and it's a story of a nightmare and at the beginning it's a little difficult to tease out the reality and the nightmare but by the end you do get to see that half of the things that the man thinks he's experiencing are actual dreams and um, I, f I found that interesting to write as well. We mentioned from a reading standpoint how these can empower, they can entertain, they can enlighten, they can inform. From your standpoint as as the author, talk about the impact these books have on you, being able to actually take these thoughts, put them into short story form, and be able to help people with these. How important are these books in your life now? Um, yeah, certainly they tend to grow on me, and the only particular reader I have is a friend of mine who who sort of edits them for me and gives me the okay or not to go ahead and publish a particular story and um, my, my stories I, are not written so well that I win competitions but I do value this lady's opinion and she will often say wow story really gets to the essence of something or another and that would give me the okay to go and include it in a book and publish it and so that's particularly the only feedback I have on the stories and if anyone writes to me I'd appreciate feedback as well I've given my um, email at the back of Mary Lives uh, if do you want me to repeat that? Yes, if you would, just My go email. ahead and repeat that, if you would, please, so people can get in contact with you. Okay, it's Mary Brooks one at optusnet dot com dot au. So Mary Brooks, or one word, then one at optusnet dot com dot au. So if anybody reads these stories and would like to send me some feedback, I'd be very grateful. And I think you will enjoy reading the three that we talked about on the program today, The Wedding, Water Lilies, and Cricket. There are many more available at uh, exlibris.com. That's the publisher. Just put in Mary Brooks, and you'll have Mary's uh, books appear there, including Mary Lives, A Story of Anorexia, Nervosa, and Bipolar Disorder that we talked about in a previous program. And again, you can find that by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, going to the archives for iTunes and YouTube, and being able to watch and or listen to the program. About 30 seconds left in the show. What are you working on now? I'm assuming you, you've got a couple of short stories that at least that you're working on? Yes, I'm working on my 11th book. Um, and again, this includes a huge variety of topics. Um, and occasionally one of them might be a development of an idea that I've had in earlier stories. Um, there's one in particular that I really love. It's a story about two um, a, two aging uh, actors, and that is based a bit on two ladies that I know. But I really love that story, and I think it will be very interesting to other people as well. 
I am looking forward to having an opportunity to uh, to read that. I've enjoyed all of the uh, the short stories that Mary has written. And again, Mary Brooks is our guest on This Week in America. The books are available at our publisher, exlibris.com. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly to that uh, uh, the website information on all of the books, including the um, the longer book, uh, Mary Lives, a Story of Anorexia Nervosa and Bipolar Disorder. Uh, Mary, it's always a pleasure to have you in the program. Excellent job with the books, and thank you for being with us once again. Thank you very much, Rick. It was my pleasure having you with us on the program. Once again, the guest uh, on today's This Week in America is Mary Brooks. Information available on all of Mary's work at our website, thisweekinamerica.us.